question number one to the leader. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I thank Councillor Hogg for his question. Can I, before I answer the question, take the opportunity to uh, add my welcome to Councillor White, but also actually add the, the warm tributes to Sally and Efson from uh, both sides, uh, and, and of course, uh, certainly Councillor Hanson's very moving tribute. Um, and Mr. Mayor, I think uh, we'd all want to wish Mr. Beloli, Mr. Sasse's predecessor well, because I know that he slipped away from his uh, long service in the council. Um, as, a, as a modest man who made great difference to this council, we're not wanting to be acknowledged, but simply to make taking the next phase of his life in his stride. But I'm sure we would want to wish Mr. Beloli well. Yeah. Um, Councillor Hogg's question, turning to that, I, mean, I think Councillor Hogg knows perf perfectly well that this council has uh, been rather buffeted by the outcome of the Ofsted inspection, but came out of it with resolve and determination and actually has the will and the resources to put it all right. As things go, we are doing very well, but good progress is being achieved and I expect that we will. So we work and certainly put work towards getting at least a good outcome. Um, I know that staff are working exceptionally hard. A uh, number of people have, new people have come, old people have gone, but I think the resolve and determination in the team remains second to none, and I'm sure we'd all want to wish them well and support them in what is obviously a very challenging and a difficult time for them. Supplementary. Um, thank you. Um, well, obviously glad to hear um, of that determination and of course join Council of India in uh, supporting the staff who are there uh, who have to put these things right um, but of course we have to guard against complacency and it, it's always been our contention that there is some political accountability a reckoning to be had as well. Um, the Ofsted report was shocking. Uh, the Council repeatedly failed foster children, children leaving care and children at risk of child sexual exploitation. Uh, the leader will be aware that Wandsworth, uh, in Wandsworth's accounts there's a new provision for £14.5 million pounds for a children's services recovery reserve. At audit committee we were told that this had been set up to fund the additional costs over the next few years to remedy the shortcomings found in the Ofsted report. Now it may be necessary to use all of this or less than all of this but is the leader satisfied that £14.5 million pounds represents the current best estimate of the ultimate cost of putting this children's services scandal right. Councillor Hogg knows uh, when to turn the volume up, uh, but he doesn't know when to actually measure the volume to, to fit the situation that we are in. Of course it's a difficult situation for the council, but we are no different from many, many local authorities across the country. Government's expectations about what uh, children in care and particularly children looked after deserve are quite rightly raised and inevitably all local authorities, at least 75% of the local authorities across the countries are found to be one way or the other wanting. What is different in Wandsworth is that we actually have a will and the resources to meet the challenge and in fact what he talks about in terms of the 14 odd million pound reserve allocation in, the, in our accounts is in fact a measure of this council's ability to put resources to put things right because it is a well-managed council, because it's a council that pro provides for the rainy day, and in case the rainy days come, we have the will to do it. Now I also say that he's wrong, completely wrong, in saying that the Ofsted report talked about repeated failures of particular types of children. I think it is a failure of the system rather than a failure to discharge our duty to individual children. I think it's right that you to get the measure, a proper measure of it. It's all good to chase a headline, but it is all much more difficult to be responsible about a difficult situation. Councillor Tracy. Thank
thank you Mr. Tracy for your question and she's quite right to draw, draw our attention to the audit, uh, National Audit Commission, uh, Committee's report about, about the finding that 75% of the authorities are found to be wanting. But of course it's the important thing for us to note here is the will and the determination. She alludes to Councillor Hogg being underbriefed. I suspect that uh, that's a feature of the group opposite. Uh, it's a small group, a perfectly well-formed group, but I'm not sure that they talk to each other. Thank you. Can I just remind uh, councillors to use their microphones and press the button? Thank you. Okay. Question number two, Councillor Hogg. Question two to the lead. I thank Councillor Hogg for his question. I took the liberty, Ms. Mert, of looking at the Council's website about this particular application number, and Councillor Hogg will have done the same, I'm sure. He will know that it is a rather wide-ranging, omnibus-type applying application, and quite rightly that the officers are taking time to make sure that all the necessary facts are, are, are available for them to make the decision that they're asked to make. And it's also quite right that the officers are taking all the time and trouble to consult all those who need to be consulted in order to get inform the decision for the members to take in due course. So delay is not unusual in planning. Uh, getting the right facts is vital and important, and all that officers are doing here are actually making sure that they've got the right information before coming to a recommendation. Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mess. Um, do I say supplementary or do you? No, no. I, I, I assume you were going to make a supplementary. That's why I've jumped up, so I'm allowing you to go ahead with it. Very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, I thank the leader for his uh, answer. Um, he, he does seem rather insecure this evening, which must mean the, these aren't very badly placed questions. Um, I, I, I would hope that he understands the anxiety of residents here, though, that the, these could become permanent changes to a listed and protected area, in particular, you know, in order to, to make this racing track, this sort of the effect of a dual carriageway, the sort of rosary car park might not be put back, green buffer zones and so on. So um, I wonder if he can just give those assurances that we are going to get our, our park back in the way that it was handed over to the Formula E crowd and if he can guarantee that the consultation will be wide ranging, will include for instance the Friends of Bassey Park and do I understand from his answer to B that there will be a new, new planning application going to the committee before the end of the year to cover anything less than full restoration in the park? I thank Councillor Hook for his supplementary. Well, I'm not insecure or uncertain. What I do know is Councillor Hogg is under-informed or ill-informed about the planning process. The one thing I cannot do is to determine the outcome of a planning application standing where I am standing. I am not on the planning applications committee. I do not have the facts in before me. There is a process, there is a due process to go, go through. And what I can say and what I have said is that the due process will be adhered to as it is always in the planning department in this country, council. Thank you. Councillor Belton. Um, of, of course the leader is right and he can't predict anything about the planning application and he knows that very well. But he is in a position to guarantee, if he wishes to, that there will be an application and that it will cover all the things exactly as Councillor Hogg requested. As he quite rightly says, he can't decide that it will be decided upon favorably or otherwise, but he does know and um, has the ability to make sure that there is such a planning application. So will he? I think Councillor Belton, who is far more familiar with the uh, planning process than his uh, um, leader, will know and does know, in fact, that until the of officer requested information is available, they cannot come to decision whether there is a gap in the information and whether this particular application is inadequate to deal with the kind of assurances he's seeking from me. If it is found to be inadequate and if it is found that he is not fit for purpose, the officers are at liberty to ask for either an amended application or a new application. And again, Councillor Belton knows it perfectly well. And I think that he should have, and I'm sure he does have, a confidence in the planning department in this council that officers will robustly seek the best, uh, seek to protect the best interests of the council. Order, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, could I just be clear about something? Surely the, 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 the purpose of the planning applications committee, as a, as a regulatory thing, as the leader has just said, is to decide these very details. And I personally have to say I think it's a waste of council meeting time to discuss details that have to be decided by a regulatory process by the planning committee, of which Councillor Belton is a member of very long standing. Sorry, can I, you have the can I stop you there? That's not a point of order, I'm advised. Sorry. We'll carry on. Councillor, sure Councillor Peterkin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question number three to the leader. I thank Councillor Peterkin for his um, question, which is a welcome question, because it is a question that goes to the heart of what is being seen by many as one of the greatest success stories in London. Um, Nine Elms is full of extraordinary facts of delivery, ambition, and, and, and so on. But the one fact in, in, the, in the answer that I really am very chuffed about is the 200 barges saving 270 tons of CO2 emission equivalent to 630 standard road vehicles in a year. I mean, having insisted that the, the removal of spoil from this, these sites is undertaken by barges and go down the river, and we have achieved this, we know perfectly well that as more and more digging happens in that area, more and more barge movements will save more and more CO2 emissions and improving air quality, not only in the immediate area, but around London. This is a great success story. This I'm referring only to one small aspect of what is, what is a, a huge achievement uh, for which both the Council and other partners have worked and worked to achieve, achieve a great outcome. What I don't say, uh, want to um, draw Council's attention to is that recently I uh, attended a meeting with uh, the team leader work match with the borough's uh, diverse faith groups to talk about the Council's ambitions on uh, delivery of work opportunities for people in, in need of employment. The team leader was absolutely full of huge, huge enthusiasm, and I think everyone there was bowled over by her sort of drive, her stamina, and approach to it. And she said to me that it is not 500. He said there's 567 as we speak. People have been found employment through her service. But more importantly than that, 85% of those people have stuck in the job more than six months. It is an incredible achievement by a team of 12 people team which has delivered enormous change to lives of 567 people. For those that I'm sure that Council would want to commend her. A supplemental, Mr. Um, Councillor Peter. Um, could the leader outline to us his plans for encouraging uh, continuing inward investment of this sort into the borough uh, and for ensuring that the borough continues to be uh, the borough of choice for firms looking for a combination of highly skilled uh, and motivated workforce and suitable business accommodation? I thank Councillor Peterkin for his supplementary. Uh, and can I take the last point about suitable business accommodation first? We have ensured that wherever possible every development includes commercial space at least at the ground floor level and if not more further above, above, the, uh, above the block. There are a fair number of applications coming through where people are revising the kind of square footage they're devoting to its commercial use because Battersea Power Station's success with Apple means that this area could become a, a very good destination for office accommodation, bringing jobs and opportunities for not only us but a wider neighborhood. So that, I think, both trends are changing and we are aware of that change and we would want to sort of make sure that we are fancy, uh, f f free to foot for to take opportunities as they come. In terms of when those opportunities come, helping out our young people to make, the, make sure that they grasp them, we work with the schools in the neighborhood as well as youth service and other to make sure that they're enthused to say, see the opportunities there are on, on their doorstep. And these are not opportunities at a low level and low skill base. And Apple shows in what type of skills that will be needed in, in time. That's the power station itself, uh, base program is training young people to take up the opportunity and use the jobs that will be appearing on their sites. There are huge, huge opportunities and I think Council Peter can, be, can rest assured that we are on top of making sure that we grasp every available opportunity. Supplementary notes. Oh, yes, um, I'm sure we all welcome much of the good news in this and in the answer to question 16 as well. Uh, however, 
uh, the median household income um, in London at the moment is uh, 26,000 um, pounds. And many of the people I represent, and uh, no doubt Council of India, cannot afford even the most affordable. Can, where are we going to spend a little bit more attention on ensuring that there's enough socially rented housing at a level that is appropriate for something like 40% of the population uh, that is largely ignored in all this, I think. And I know that he's concerned about it. He's concerned about it in the Wynn Stanley and uh, 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 autumn regenerations. But there's not much sign of it here. Could he ensure that in future there is as much emphasis on socially rented housing too? Thank Councillor Belton for his question and I'm, I'd like to believe that when he says that he welcomes uh, these opportunities and these changes uh, and, uh, in the borough, I hope he's right and fulsome in his, in his welcome of that. Returning to his point about housing, what I think this council needs to take into account is that these are changes in the borough and we have a borough-wide responsibility to make sure that the right type of opportunities arise in one place and the right type of needs are met in another place if that is the more appropriate way of doing it. In the immediate neighbourhood of uh, Batsy Power Station and so on, in Patna and Savannah, we are building 80, 57 new homes aimed targeted exactly the kind of paper Councillor Belton uh, refers to, not very far away from where York Road in Stanley, again he refers to, we are doing exactly that and we would want to take every opportunity to make sure that the land we control and therefore land that is much more affordable and ready available, readily available is used to find, to, to meet the needs of the borough's resident population. He knows, and I know he knows, that I am as committed as any other, any person in this council to make sure that housing that we generate in this borough if meets the requirements of residents of this borough as well as the wider needs of London. Councillor Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Ayer. Question number four for the leader. I think Councillor Carpenter for his question about apprenticeships and so on. I, you know, it's a fairly fulsome answer in here. And I just want to sort of hone in on, on, the, on the bit under C, where we talk about you know, providing opportunities to grow to young people uh, and, and, and sort of showcase an employment in the public sector. And I think it's, it's very important that we who are in the public sector and know its worth and value spend some time and effort growing our own talent and nurturing that talent. Because I think the challenges of the public sector are huge and we need the best quality of staff that we need and I think the best way of making, ensuring that you get it is to grow your own and I think that that's exactly what our graduate recruitment program between us and Richmond will do but more than that the apprenticeships will give us an opportunity to showcase what local authorities are all about, what they can deliver, how satisfying a career in local government might be to, to people who hitherto may not have considered uh, local government. Close. So I think this is a, this is a great opportunity opportunity for young people and for us to, to, to get that connection right. Supplementary. Councillor Carpenter. Thank you. Uh, can I make it clear in relation to the last bit of your answer that uh, the Labour Group fully supports Wandsworth in expanding its apprenticeship off offer? However, we are concerned that we don't, in doing this, rob Peter to pay Paul. So can the leader assure me that the ongoing costs of funding these apprenticeships are some two to three million? pounds a year, which are estimated by officers, will not be uh, obtained by uh, cutting staff costs elsewhere in the council. Thank you. I thank Councillor Carpenter for a supplementary, and I suppose the supplementary goes to the heart of my conundrum about this. I, when the paper that eventually went to General Purposes Committee here was discussed at the Joint Shared Staffing Committee attended by myself and Councillor Hogg and, and, and colleagues from Richmond and Councillor Senior, uh, there was virtually no 
questioning about the content of that paper and its, its recommendations. The same paper uh, went to, to the GP and uh, following intervention by Unison, uh, the Labour Party's position somewhat changed. Which brought to my mind the question as to whose side are they on? Uh, are they on the side of young people seeking career uh, in local government and apprenticeship opportunities or are, are they on the side, side of the unions on a protectionist measure? I think Councillor question Carpenter's supplementary shows what side they are on. Second supplementary. Councillor Caddy. Um, when I speak to apprentices, one of their key frustrations is the perception of the apprentice route as somehow being inferior to the, to the university route. And I think this attitude has long been noted as a real barrier to young people um, taking up apprenticeships. Does the leader agree with me? that we need to change those attitudes in this country and that the council leading by example and embracing and promoting apprenticeships in its own workforce will go some way to do, towards doing this. I wholeheartedly welcome Councillor Caddy's um, question. Like, like all of these things, you know, we, we, we chase in this country and as a society, we chase a kind of education that doesn't necessarily mean there is a job at it at the end of it and when we denigrate a, a, a skill acquisition program where there is a job at the end of it as being sort of not quite it but colleagues would be interested to know that recently i was an interview panel where i interviewed a, a young person whose uh, cv said we had said that he worked in the bank of england uh, and he was a, a senior accounts manager in the bank of england but his education uh, element of his cv said that he joined the bank of england after completing his a levels so my question to him was that uh, do you think university education is overrated and his very crisp answer was yes i am a success story of saying how underrated it can be because he found that the program bank of england has is hugely hugely interesting and they will train him on the job whilst he's earning a living and i do think that we need to look at non-academic way routes to, to getting the skills and the training uh, that, that we need and I think as a, a apprenticeship valuing apprenticeships and, and valuing those who take that route is, is the start of the start of that process the period for leaders questions has now elapsed